Weeds and mosses naturally take less than a year to cover a body of empty fertile land which then are joined by ragweeds after 3 to 10 years, followed by tree saplings by 25 years, and next thing you know, a flourishing forest by 100 years. Yet in deserts, the only plants which could live even sparsely are the most resilient cacti or shrubs, and rare greenery often come from what stranded people in the desert stricken by madness from dehydration falsely see as a mirage, an oasis. So how is it places like Huacachina, an oasis with water in the deserts of Peru, exist? While this is a man-made oasis sustained by pumps, some natural water reservoirs actually do exist in the middle of deserts, and in northwest China, oases such as in the Mingqing County account for only about 4-5% to of the land, but sustain 90% of the northwest population and account for 95% of the social wealth from these arid areas. Although oases provide some moisture to arid environments, deserts, and many other arid environments usually cannot be maintained moist as they are dry due to geographic conditions. In fact, much of the dry regions of the world are so due to wind currents which may drain certain regions of humidity through moving and condensing it. The Rocky Mountains, for example, are passed over by a jet stream heading east over the United States which dumps moisture over the cooler, higher mountains before drying out in places in the Midwest like Kansas termed the rain shadow effect. This is also the case in areas around 30 degrees north or south of the equator where so-called Hadley cells, part of the Earth's ongoing wind patterns, flow into one another towards the equator, rise, and give up moisture into the tropics of the world, then dive over the 30 degree north and south areas as dry air. Because of the compression of the air in the 30 degree areas, weather is often calm and legend has it New World sailors had to throw horses overboard to conserve water for themselves themselves in these low wind areas, leading to the term horse latitudes. Moisture accumulates in the 60 degree north and south latitudes in the same way. Additionally, the rapid compression of air as it descends into these latitudes releases heat from compressional heating, and this coupled with global warming further dry out these areas by increasing water evaporation. Many of these areas encounter water shortages due to the depletion of groundwater, which originates from precipitation or rain, feeds existing oases and is pumped for agriculture, recreation, and necessities. Because groundwater depletion is a major issue, particularly in the 30 degree north and south latitudes, measures have been taken to recycle gray water or used water and make usage of water more efficient as groundwater is replenished slowly. However, some measures may be taken to deter evaporation and research has found water pumped into these arid regions for irrigation remains for a short while as moisture and clouds. Moreover, cloud coverage shows a constant supply of water introduced into an arid environment could theoretically sustain rainfall. Ecologist Alan Savory from Zimbabwe even has used a novel method of herd grazing to biodegrade dead grasslands as opposed to lighting dry grasslands on fire and this method reduces carbon emissions while maintaining humidity in soil, a finding which has brought plant life and crop yield to environments once considered inhospitable. The idea of holistic grassland management agrees with the finding shrubs and plant life help contain water and greatly increase fertility, and livestock are able to be grown in the process. Alan Savory speculates atmospheric carbon dioxide could be reduced to pre-industrial levels through using herd grazing to fixate atmospheric carbon dioxide into grasslands for just half the world's arid regions.